now more than ever, people need to go within and plug into that cellular memory, plug into divine source, detach as much as possible from the matrix. Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, my very special guest is Louisa Love. Uh, the website is Louisa Love Radical Freedom. Louisa has her own kinesiology course. She conducts workshops and retreats. She's very much into self reintegration, healing, and she is very well versed and understanding of the spiritual warfare component uh, behind a lot of the things that happen here in our surface our surface world. So without any further ado, Louisa Love, welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Hi, James. Thank you very, very much for having me here today. And as you know, I, I feel so passionate to be actually speaking about my experiences because I do feel it is really relevant for what is going on right now in the world around us. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I, I'll kind of start, I'll start, I think, by just, um, yeah, maybe, maybe sharing a little bit about my past and how that relates to the experiences that I've had more recently, which involves, um, obviously, uh, the, you know, a lot of extraterrestrial experiences and also anomalous uh, trauma and, um, and just how that all relates to what is going on um yeah just just what's going on right now so um so yeah i i originally come from south africa where i grew up in a a family um a very very christian family there's a lot of christian programming that i've had to untangle and um and there was also something that i that that's been a, a very much a theme in my life and that still is something that is I feel like this is very much uh, part of my purpose here as a soul actually is to unravel this further, not only within myself, but also um, on the outside. So looking at, at how this, this happens in the world outside of me, but it is the, this, um, this notion of kind of spiritual bypassing and enabling. <clears throat> so it's something I've, I've, I've been witness to since I was very little. In other words, something that I saw, for instance, in my family home would be, a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, a lot of abuse, a lot of trauma in the home environment itself. But then we would go to church and there would be lots of smiles and lots of you know, caring cuddles and hands would be in the air. And it, would, it was just so different. Um, and I just remember even as a child back then, I would think, God, I just don't want to be like this. I, I, I want... I want the good stuff, but I want to have it all the time. <laughs> I don't just want it some of the time. And that's how my little child mind was thinking at, the t at that time, because of course, um, that in itself is also a bit of a bypass. But, um, but I just remember seeing, you know, that, that stark contrast. And, um, and it really bothered me. And part of, part of um, what happened there was also um, my own my own abuse. So I was, I was sexually abused by my uh, mother's father um, for quite a number of years. And he was a deacon in church. He was a ver very well respected, um, very well respected person in the community. And again, it's, it's the classic case of, uh, you know, abuse being enabled um, because of, you know, the, the, the person that he portrays himself to be in society, but then behind closed doors, it's a very, very different, um, you know, the, 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 the story changes and it's very damaging. And, and I saw it also in the relationship between my, my mother and father, my mother being um, also projecting um, her, her own trauma onto my father and, and, be, and, and us and being very abusive. And my father who had a very, very abusive um, father himself, um, just enabling that by either, you know, uh, completely just ignoring what's going on or, or literally just not even being there, just, just going off and, and um, or, 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 or almost kind of locking himself in his study and just doing his work. And 
again, it was this this clear this this clear setup of the the kind of sort of narcissistic abusive behaviour. But that can only actually really happen if there's the enabler um, or the or the empathic enabler or the avoider. Um, and then, of course, that abuse can just continue to um, to take place. And that is what happened to me. And I just remember, I, I, I mean, I didn't think about it the way I do now, of course, when I was back then, I was just trying to survive it all. Um, but I just remember always having a sense of this is not fair, like the, the, this is so unjust and wanting true justice in my life. And, um, you know, there were a number of things that happened that was just so, that just, that just, you know, they were just outright really, really, really unfair. And for instance, when, when um, all the abuse surfaced and it came to light, I, I was uh, nearly 11 years old at that stage. And I think it took about a year before my parents, um, they, they basically said to me, well, we're Christians and you've got to forgive him and he's going to come back into the house again. And, you know, the, the, just the, the level of, it's almost like, be, you know, well, it is like being abused again because here are the people you trust and they are allowing um, the abuser back into into your your home environment an environment that's meant to be safe and i just remember feeling this outrage and anger and being told that that was bad that that was wrong and that i just should smile and forgive and so of course what then ended up happening was a lot of a lot more trauma um and you know age 15 i try i i even attempted to end my life um, there were a lot of a lot of very very traumatic relationships I entered into. I also then tried to escape all the trauma by getting into into drugs, and this was around um, my late teens, early twenties. Um, so again, enabling and but also one of the biggest one of the biggest um, kind of uh, how, how can you call this? Um, uh, also like a spiritual bypass in many ways for me was um, wanting a relationship a romantic relationship to save me and to help me and to make it all go away so I would have these fantasies if I wasn't in a relationship I would always fantasize about being in a relationship and being with someone who would be perfect and who would love me so deeply that all my wounds would heal and of course you know as we know that that never ever ever works out that way um but i did i did meet someone in my mid-20s um he you know we ended up marrying and we had a very um very deep very codependent relationship um and that yeah that that then took me in my in my mid-20s this is when i left south africa and i came to stay in the united kingdom um, and I stayed in London at that stage with my with my um, with my ex. And at that point, about a year into our relationship, I became very ill physically, non surprising because all the trauma, um, unaddressed uh, trauma from my past, but also the fact that I was constantly put on antibiotics as a child. Um, so what ended up happening was my body, age 25, just collapsed, and I became ex just extremely tired, very, very ill, um, and and I was depressed, anxious, and I just I just didn't know what to do anymore. It was it was a really really difficult time of my life, but it was also the beginnings of my, I guess, my first awakening to my path, um, because I started searching for healing in the alternative. Um, yeah, I started looking for alternative ways to heal myself because the doctors didn't know what to do with me. And so <clears throat> at this point, I tried a number of different therapies, a number of different things. None of it really touched sides until I met a, a kinesiologist. And, um, and this is why I do what I do today, because I've also studied kinesiology. And then within about, I'd say, four months, my physical symptoms had, I'd say, 95% completely gone um, I was doing so much better and I was just blown away by the power of that particular healing modality. 
And then the real deep inner work uh, really began where we launched into doing deep trauma, trauma clearing. I would see her monthly for about 10 years. And we just started doing very deep unraveling um, of patterns and trauma. And, and this served me really well. But unfortunately, at the same time, I also became very interested in the new age. And I know that this is a, a well-known tale. And I know that you are very aware of this as well, James, just all the, again, enabling and uh, spiritual bypassing that goes on in the new age. And so unfortunately, I had one foot in that um, kind of ungrounded reality. And then I had my other foot in a very real, very, very decent psychological processing and, and spiritual healing as well. So I had both. Um, and yeah, there, there, came a, there, there was a point, um, maybe about 10 years in, where I really ramped up the inner work, where I was doing a lot of inner work on myself daily. <clears throat> and I remember that at that stage, I was just feeling lighter and clearer. I wasn't getting triggered anymore emotionally by my partner. And I actually ended up healing myself out of that codependent relationship. So in other words, I came to a point where I knew that I couldn't stay in the relationship any longer. Like that I, even though I still loved him, I knew that I had to walk away because it wasn't serving me anymore. And that was, that was the, the, the toughest, the, the most difficult thing I've ever done because you know, this was a person in my life who did, who I felt for the first time, really, I, sa I felt safe with him. I felt loved by him. And it was a really, really, really tough walking out of that, you know, walking away from that relationship. And so it's, um, it's very interesting to note that then within days after leaving him, that's when I had my spiritual awakening. This was 2013. So stepping out of that codependent, codependency, um, and unfortunately, again, because of all that new age programming, I really believe now in hindsight, this is why my awakening was hijacked. And it was also because I wasn't, you know, I still had wounds. I still had shadow work to do and that I'd been bypassing with um, because of a lot of new age programming. And of course, I take full responsibility for that as well, because I, you know, that's what I'd attracted into my life at that point. <laughs> But um, nevertheless, at that, at that stage, I was so ignorant and, you know, I was, I just couldn't believe actually what was happening in my life at that point, because, you know, I had this immense awakening experience, but within days after this experience, again, um, I started experiencing um, abductions. So I was, I was, I was then abducted by extra, extraterrestrials, by the greys. And, um, and also they did experiments on me. They started to um, implant me with very, very strange implants. Now, this is something that's quite interesting because um, I can really describe them pretty well. Um, they were quite, kind of like organic, um, half alive, um, they can grow in the body, they can move, but very slowly. Um, it's also, they, they seem to be multifunctional. They can, they can, uh, they can even um, like drop thoughts into your head. So it's, it's part of a, a type of mind control. Um, it can also cause pain within your muscular system. Um, and, and basically, you know, night after night, and this, this, just, this went on for about six months or even more, I was abducted. And not only was I going through abduction experiences, but I was also seeing um, a lot of uh, discarnate souls. So um, deceased, um, you know, human souls would come to me and, um, and latch onto my light at that point. And that was also very, very difficult to deal with because I didn't, I had absolutely no idea how to cope with what was going on at, the, at that stage. And I had two small children and I was going through a divorce. I was uh, moving home and everything in my life had literally just completely shattered and fallen apart. So not only was I stepping out of the matrix, but I was 
all now because the pro the new age programming was oh we're ascending and it's all going to be amazing and wonderful and you know there are some wonderful angels and ets but my experience was the opposite it was like waking up to the horror of actually what's going on here on earth and that this is actually uh, more like a farm and that humans are being um fed off and 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 that um yeah that we're not really ascending at all and um and so that was it was just a massive shock and it's not something i've read in a book this is not something that i've studied it is something that i have experienced and that i know to be true so this is also part of why i feel my story at this stage james is is so um important because um it you know this is this is something that's coming from my own experience so I don't know if you, um, yeah, if you have anything to say at this stage. Um, yeah, I, I was going to ask about when the ET element uh, became uh, apparent in your consciousness. Were you still a, a young girl at the time you were undergoing the abuse and then you started noticing this unusual phenomena around you as well? You know, it's so interesting, James, because I know with a lot of people who've had, um, who have um, extraterrestrial experiences, that this is something that they tend to experience from a very young age, or they, they will have memories that would surface. For me, that hasn't happened yet. I honestly, before my awakening experience in 2013, I was really in this, in this, in my reality at that point, I was just in this matrixy kind of this Maya illusion, you know, just in, in this world where a false, there was this false sense of safety, I guess, that everything was just transparent as it was, you know, that, that, that the governments would, would, you know, had our best interest at, at heart and that, you know, people, everybody was just doing their best. Um, you know, I just had this really uh, simplistic, um, ignorant kind of, you know, childlike, uh, yeah, view of the world, and and then plus all that new age kind of programming as well. I know I I kind of like knew that I kind of felt you know that that there were angels around, and I didn't. I, to be honest, I didn't even think about extraterrestrials. You know, that didn't even really come into my consciousness. I just thought of I, I thought of it as in oh the good angels, and maybe there are some you know bad demonic beings, but you know. I'm not going to focus on that and then, then that will never enter into my um, reality. That's just part of that new age kind of programming of, you know, what you focus on, you're going to get more of. And uh, so initially when I did go through that awakening, I really thought there was something very wrong with me. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on here? Like, I must be really, really bad <laughs> if this is happening to me. Um, because again, that, that was all part of that entrainment with the new age is that you know um you know you you can only experience possession or kind of you know this type of attack if if your consciousness is really low um which i've discovered obviously since that that's not true i mean obviously that is also true that can be true yes but also as we awaken um we can also attract um especially like, like with, with with my story um if we still have unhealed wounds and traumas um we can most certainly also attract um, a type of attack if, if our, ba our boundaries are not intact. And at that, at that stage as well, if you can imagine with all the sexual abuse that I'd gone through and with all the entrainment, like my, ba I had, my boundaries were so weak. Um, so I didn't really have very strong boundaries at all. And, and that's how they got in. And I can just, you know, a lot of the uh, abduction experiences, uh, my memory was wiped. But I do know, um, I do have some memories, so I do know, and also I knew it was, hap at, at certain times I knew it just, I would just know, I, okay, I've been abducted again. So it's like being dropped off, like in my bed. And I could then feel things moving about my body. Um, and things just got stranger and stranger. And I, I also started attracting clients who also had extraterrestrial experiences. And again, never before my awakening had I any, you know, I just, this is what makes I think my story quite interesting because I just didn't even research it. I wasn't interested in it. 
I just thought, oh yeah, it's something that's in the movies, and it's yeah, it's it, it didn't didn't really come into my into my consciousness. So it was a massive massive shock for me. Um, 2013, uh, just after that awakening, it was a huge shock when I realised what was actually going on. And um, as I yeah, it's it was a big a big big shock. Um, but now in hindsight again you know i've had seven years to process and i've literally been on a journey the last seven years of you know just clearing my field and you know from a from a much higher perspective you know we can also see that uh there's there's an opportunity for very deep growth so when you know because with everything that happened to me, I was very much shown where all my wounds still were, you know, so it's like years of wound, years of trauma. Um, so this is where this implant is still feeding off. And as soon as I'd heal that wound, as soon as I would heal the trauma, and I would do sufficient, say, uh, meditation techniques or, or work with, with various different um, uh, mental body clearing and also emotional body clearing techniques, then the, the implants would go. So I, I began to realize that, okay, this stuff is, is actually, uh, you know, it's also serving a purpose from a higher perspective. It's kind of showing me where I need to work or where the work needs to be done. So it's, it's been, yeah, it's been a very, very interesting, quite a mad, but interesting journey. And, you know, it, it took me a number of years to really come to terms with the fact that, you know, this world is not what I what I ever thought it to be and um, and that actually there is quite a sinister agenda taking place here and um, you know it's it, it is quite it, it's not you know people don't really want to hear that people want to hear the love and light and that's why the new age is booming still and why people are still in that psyop because people want to have hope and people want to you know they want to be hopeful and they want to think that everything's going to be fine and we're all ascending and we don't even have to do anything because the waves of like, you know, the solar flares are doing it for us or, um, or some good ETs are going to come and, 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 you know, save us. Um, so again, it's kind of playing into that hopeful childlike um, yearning that I think so many of us have. Um, so it's a really important part of our journey is to toughen up, to get really, really strong in our field, very strong in our boundaries, and to start seeing through, through the lies and the deceptions and all the, you know, the bullshit. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The uh, the new age is in itself a, a control system, and I like it nowadays, especially to to a form of of cosmic socialism where you get one gets the impression when they're really immersed in the new age philosophies that there's really not a lot of work to do i mean there's no self shadow work there's no real delving into one's own trauma uh, everything is projected outwards uh, and we have this ideal or they have this ideal to just go to higher and higher dimensions without first doing the, the internal work. Now, now with the benefit of hindsight, uh, Louisa, can you look back and see what aspects of the new age perhaps not necessarily hindered uh, your, your growth or, or your healing or reintegration and not even necessarily derailing it or sidetracking it, but perhaps kind of just, you know, slowed down or hindered the process somewhat. Were there yeah. certain aspects of the new age which you can pinpoint uh, that that played a role in this? Absolutely. And the thing is, it is it is complicated because actually, like some of the, um, the say, for instance, some of the spiritual bypassing that is out there, a lot of a lot of the things um, statements that are that are you know flying around. A lot of it is very true. But they are very higher, like higher truths that are jumped to prematurely because, you know, it's kind of like not wanting to face the work in between, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, for instance, I had this belief, and this is when I was very much in my relationship, 
um, when I was uh, with my ex. And yeah, I had this belief that I should just accept him exactly as he was. And there was, you know, even if that meant there was some abusive behaviors. And again, that's, it's, it's to misunderstand actually a very important teaching because acceptance of what is, is, is actually a really uh, a beautiful teaching, but it, it's, it's something that I misunderstood. I, 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 I used it as a means to, to bypass as well. And I think a lot of people misunderstand a lot of these um, higher order kind of uh, teachings, if that makes sense. So it's, it's, it's like I, I saw accept, accept everything as it is, as yes, I have to enable as well abusive behavior or forgive, you know, forgive those around you for they know not what they do or whatever it is. Oh yes, I have to, I now have to, and this means I, I, you know, should just um, forgive everyone and, 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 and enable abuse. Whereas now in hindsight, I know that the truth is yes, it is about accepting that things are the way they are, but that doesn't mean that you stay in an, in, in an abusive relationship or that you stay, um, you know, witness to uh, without saying anything when you actually see um, injustices taking place or people being, you know, abused or anything like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, it does. And did a peer group um, of some sort play a role uh, with a new age? Because I, I've spoken to the friends that from that standpoint went through a similar experience and what they told me at least some of them was that when they began to question or break away from the new age programming and the new age philosophies there seemed to be someone there to pop up to kind of try to reel them back in and say well you just you know absolutely lack of a better term spiritually unevolved right absolutely i mean i experienced this and i think it happens not only in this 3D reality, but that also happens in the astral. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, I had my awakening and then even at that, then I started getting involved with teachings where people were still speaking about um, the truth of the extraterrestrial um, stuff going on on this planet. But they would also then spin it with things like, yeah, but we don't have to do anything because actually all of this is already healed. You, you see, you see what I'm saying. So it's like, again, saying, well, you don't have to, you know, you don't actually have to do the inner work because it's already, you're already saved. It's all going to be fine. Yes. We're, and, and so initially that was the, the, those were the teachings that I kind of was tuned into just after my awakening. And I was like, Oh, this is so weird. Like, okay. So these people, they're aware of the ET thing and they're saying this, and then I had to break through deeper and deeper kind of layers of that new age programming so that I could really, you know, come to a place of, of the truth, which is no, actually, hang on. This is, this is actually another psyop trying to just uh, create complacency. Um, and actually, I, this is the very last thing I need to be right now is to be complacent. I need to do the inner work. And actually, this is where, where personal responsibility and um you know plays such a huge role and it's so important to to really look at, to be willing to look at ourselves and to do that inner work to really unravel our own wounding uh, our traumas and this is not an easy thing as you know um it's you know it, you have to to be able to or be willing to to do this from various different angles so it's not just psychological processing but it's also you know like soul retrieval and you know, mental body clearing, like, you know, learning how to be able to really uh, c control the mind as well, how to become the master of the mind. Better, better. Yeah, it feels better to say that. But um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, so that's, that's what I would say. I mean, what, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, and you mentioned earlier also that there was an astral component to, to this new age. Uh, probably our contact manipulation and uh, would you like to elaborate on that because that that sounds interesting absolutely i mean you know there are um false light beings that again they 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 will come they can come to you say in your dream state or in your sleep state 
and they will portray themselves as you know being the good guy this could be from anything from say archangel michael or um, you know, like an archangel or an ascended master or some kind of a group entity being or thing. Um, there's, there's a lot of what I noticed as well in the beginning when I first broke through, when I first broke through the matrix. Um, so at the very beginning baby stages, there was a lot of information that was coming to me around, for instance, the, the Galactic uh, Federation of Light, you know, and um, you know, the, 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 these are kind of like groups that are actually in the astral or in the false density <clears throat> that are saying, we are here, we are here to help you. We, we, we are watching over you. We're going to come and save you. Don't worry. We're all aware of what's going on with the reptilians. We're all aware of what's going on with the greys and, and don't worry. You know, we're right. We're your brothers and sisters and soon we're going to come and you can come with us and we're going to take you away on our spaceship and you're going to, you know, you're going to be just fine. And again, that's another, it's another form of deception. So as, as within, so without, as, as above, so below, it's, it's, it doesn't just happen here on this um, earth plane, but it's also happening. Yeah. In the astral. And um, it's, it's very dangerous because, many many people are falling for it and this is the thing is we have to become so watchful and so like vigilant on our path to really make sure that we don't um get stuck in these rabbit holes potholes as you know the path is narrow we have to um we have to keep checking you know are you giving your are you giving your energy away to anybody else are you or are you standing firm in your own self and um and your own empowerment or are you giving your power away to something else whether it be consciously or unconsciously and so a lot of those psyops a lot of the whether it be in the astral or even in 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 this reality is that is, it's a setup to kind of pull you out either to pull you out of your body it's there it's here to, to keep you in disempowerment keep you in victim and keep you enslaved really ultimately it's about keep you know the the it's so that the setup is so clever because it's it's all about keeping us dumbed down keeping us you know keeping us enslaved and and we the only way that we can truly truly break free is to to claim true sovereignty and really to stand firm within our own empowerment our own boundaries to make sure we're not you know giving any energy to any other beings um and this can also happen with with our emotions, as you know. You know, we we can unconsciously give emotional loose as well to to um, to beings without even realizing it. If you're not responsibly processing through your emotions, that's what's going to be happening. So if you don't actually, if you're not taking full ownership, full responsibility, then you know who knows what you're you know what you're actually giving your energy to. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed in the last seven years is it, it gets more and more refined. The process is getting more and more refined, really, really checking in, you know, who, what's going on here? Am I putting this person on a pedestal or do I see this person as my equal or, you know, it's checking all your relationships, checking your thoughts on everything, you know, and really investigating each and every thought as they come. Is this my thought? You know, or is this an influence thought, or is this a cultural thought, or is this a programmed thought from from my ancestry, or from a soul level, or or you know, it's 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 really beginning to unlayer those those uh, patterns, at, you know, in, in a very very deep deep way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. <laughs> and there's an element also of of ego activation where you know, another thing that people have to understand is a lot of people do, that don't understand the, the inner plane aspect, the astral plane aspect, and the ability of these archontic beings to mask themselves and, and use telepathy and use kind of a, like a synchronistic dog and pony act to make one believe that they're very special and whatnot. So when they hear terms or of groups like the galactic federation of light 
the reaction for many people is to roll their eyes and oh such silliness but they don't realize that there's an insidious aspect to that that there really is a consciousness out there in the inner planes in the astral yeah. planes that hook into people and yeah. activate the ego and we want you to be an emissary of the galactic federation of light and pretty soon you have all these people out there giving a message but ultimately the beings the consciousness behind the messages are archontic and have no intention of, of ever letting us out of this this prison paradigm trap absolutely it's just another trap and there, there are this is the thing i think to also remember there are so many traps <laughs> we have to be so um observant of, of 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 all the traps but yes this is very interesting i'm so glad you've mentioned the ego aspect because the first time I realized that I was being abducted was actually when I was being told by the ETs how amazing I was. So this was in the very beginning. So it happened a few weeks, maybe after my, um, the, the awakening experience that I had in, um, uh, seven years ago. And uh, I just remember them standing around me and, and, and literally saying, you are amazing. You are amazing. And they just kept repeating it. And, and I remember I was kind of like in a half awake, half dream state. And when I came, you know, when I kind of came to, I immediately just knew, I was like, this, this is, this is not right. This is, you know, this is very sinister. They're, they're playing into my, into some kind of a spiritual ego that, that I need to unravel and look at, you know, and, and that's exactly what I've had to do. I've had to really very honestly look at, you know, because of, of course the ego the ego really is just wounded. It's, 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 it's wounded parts of ourselves that really want to be seen and, and heard and loved. And so again, it's pointing to doing deeper inner child core wounding. And um, so that we can, again, unravel these egoic aspects of ourselves with compassion and with care. Um, and that's, you know, that's also what I'm really, uh, very passionate about now because I work you know obviously I work on myself um, very thoroughly but I also see clients most days who I also support and I have done for years and um, and I think yeah just just to, just to be able to stay very very compassionate with ourselves it's so easy to also jump into judgment you know especially when our egos are involved um, but to just understand that, you know, where, where does this ego, where does this ego come from? You know, where is it actually coming from? It's coming from pain and wounding. Um, and then that's, that kind of helps to unravel it a bit more until, um, you know, the ego can become our ally, ally rather than our enemy. <laughs> um, but what the other thing that also plays into this, James, is the fact that this is why they, um, you know, these beings, they love for us to be traumatized and in trauma um, because every time we experience a trauma, the soul fragments and the more fragmented we are, the more easily we're um, manipulated, you know, the more easily we can be manipulated by them, especially in our dream time, especially in the astral. So when we're not even aware, we can have parts of ourselves signing off contracts without us, the conscious self even being aware of it. But that part is being manipulated because that's a, a part that's maybe been, you know, horrifically abused at some stage in your life and you haven't, um, you know, done the inner work and, the, and, the, and the, the thorough healing on that part. And then that part kind of almost like works against you. And again, this is all part of why uh, we, the, the, really for me, the goal in all of this is to become fully soul and core self or, or spirit embodied, you know, to really become fully unified as a human being and to bring and integrate all of our, our traumatized parts. So healing trauma is an absolute must for everyone on this path. You know, this is, you know, we've all been traumatized and it's not just individual trauma, but it's also collective trauma, you know, like what's going on in the world right now, for instance, with all the race stuff. You know, um, again, it's it's a, it's an old collective um, trauma that you know there, it's it's like sticking sticking the finger into the wound and twisting it, and and of course then they know you know this is going to give us a lot of a lot of food, um, and as you and I were were saying as well, there's a lot you know unfortunately right now 
there's a lot of harvesting going on because you know locking down the whole world in fear and then also uh you know pushing on the race trauma you know the the amounts of emotional louche that 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 that's that's kind of um feeding these beings right now i mean it's 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 just immense you know compared to what it even was say four months ago so there's i know you know from the experiences that i've had that this is what's happening right now they're, they're harvesting for some reason that's what they're doing and um you know this is uh, we have to become very 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 uh watchful very very um persistent in our approach to um unraveling and healing and and integration you know integrating our ourselves essentially like all parts of ourselves um so that we so that we're not um easily manipulated and controlled and so that we can also stand really firmly in ourselves and then from that place we can really create massive change because from that place we can help so many other people um, who are still stuck in those rabbit holes um, you know we can then really be an anchor for others as well as ourselves but it's not an easy path it's you know as you know it's 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 just it's wow i mean sometimes i think about it i'm like what how did i even end up here this is it's it's very very um perilous very very challenging path there's so much to unravel so much to heal for us to truly truly break free from from this matrix control system and all of the psyops and all of the the um the deceptions along the way so yeah um you made a good point earlier about the the astral planes because unfortunately due to the trauma especially when one is subjected to repeated trauma sexual trauma from childhood the dis the dissociation kicks in but also there's the the out of body uh, astral mm. plane dissociation and people don't realize in some of these my lab controllers and mk controllers that they've known this for some time that they can actually program and direct distinct personalities in the astral form uh, it's not just a subject if you will a traumatized mk uh, monarch or or a my lab who's under my control in the physical but they can actually work through and direct and command these astral alters, these astral uh, operators uh, under my control. And, and the ETs and the interdimensional archontic beings know this as, as well because that's one of the ways they really hook into us. As you know, Louisa, is in the astral state. Uh, we're already disembodied. We're yeah. already fragmented. Yeah. We're already dissociated. And because of all the repeated trauma, we're, we're so yeah. su suggestible in that state that is so spot on and that is why for instance you'll have say two kids smoking pot maybe they've had they've dissociated and had a lot of trauma they, they play some violent video games and the next thing they go off and they do a mass killing they'll go and shoot you know children in their school and that's that that that's again that that's that kind of like possession it's 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 targeting it's it they're able to get into the trauma the dissociation and and then it's like almost like full they can even do like a full body takeover um in certain cases obviously if you very very um split from your from your call um but yeah but even in like our our day-to-day -day, like with our, our day-to-day um, interactions with others you know, it's amazing how I've even seen, again, in the last seven years, dealing with people who are really in the conscious community who are still, unfortunately, you know, sometimes being used as portals as well um, to cause kind of, again, to cause reactions and to cause um, because ultimately those beings are wanting to feed. So they'll keep pushing into those wounds um, and they'll keep triggering, triggering, triggering just for, that, for those responses so that they can also feed. And, and, and continue to manipulate and again this is why it's so 
imperative and so incredibly important for us to continuously be so vigilant and looking at every trigger like why am I triggered right now is this valid or where is this coming from is this coming from my childhood is this you know um, and just to investigate that and to to really heal it um, from the bottom up rather than just the surf just the surface healing which is again very much what I I think was doing with the new age stuff which was very surface in other words not really looking at the the, the 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 whole process of healing or the process of healing is denied we just want to jump to the to to where we want to be which is like forgiveness or full acceptance or um yeah just just jump jumping to those 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 states of kind of bliss and love and joy we just want to want to feel that like that like that child or like the, a drug addict who just wants to feel um an escape from their pain you know and it's just the only way actually out is is through you know we've got to go through it we've we've got to go back in and heal um really deeply heal these uh, trauma woundings that we've gone through individually and collectively so you know it's like for instance with what was going on with this uh with the racial trauma at the moment um i think it was last week or the week before just to give you an idea <laughs> someone wrote something on my facebook page and it sort of triggered me and then i you know i really had to sit with it i had to really investigate it and i realized that i still carried some deep shame and guilt from uh, my growing up in apartheid south africa and going on to like beaches for instance where they had these signs up saying whites only and just the 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 pain and the oh just the pain and the sadness of it all and just how it 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 directly affected my life and those and 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 as an empath um also the people around me and the people i loved and um and so it gave me an opportunity uh to do a very deep healing on this collective kind of trauma and going deeper into how it affected me as a child also there were times where i remember being very very young and being in the back of like a friend of mine's um car and her mum was just such a racist i mean she was a proper racist and she was just you know throwing out all these racial slurs and as a child this was so painful for me and i remember sitting there and wanting to just scream and tell her to stop but i just i didn't feel powerful enough to do that and again the pain of that that's a trauma you know any memory that we can remember um that involves us you know feeling feeling upset like that is a trauma so that was you know um experiencing a trauma and uh, and again that that feeling of not being able to speak and um and it was funny because the 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 what was triggered on facebook was someone was saying to me you don't have the right to say anything because of you know because you're white and and so i could really access that trauma of like not being able to speak and it really helped me to unravel that deeper deeper wound within myself does does that make sense yes it does and and very astute of you to be able to make that adjustment to be able to turn a potential negative into a positive coming from a south african background that that's kind of a low blow especially in light of all the the racial division and the race baiting that's going on today that's like picking at a scab and i was just also thinking louisa too that you know when the person made that comment it, it was an ignorant comment on many levels because they were probably oblivious of, of the amount of abuse you'd suffered from within your own family which is white right so th there was like the all these different levels of having to work through trauma the shame and as you know one of the hallmarks of trauma is the inability later to establish proper emotional psychological physical and energetic boundaries to the point exactly. where well, when you look at it from the esoteric spiritual supernatural level 
a lot of the unhealed New Agers. They delve into all kinds of practices, which really open them up. Now, uh, in, in the time we got left in the first segment, and uh, if necessary, uh, I'd like you to continue with this uh, in, in the next segment, uh, Louisa. Sure. When you caught on to the deception being played by these ETs, you caught them red-handed trying to activate your ego. You realized that there was something incongruent at work because you had all this stuff you still needed to work through, yet they were trying to convince you that you were a spiritually really evolved being and you knew deep down that you know you weren't quite there yet. When you caught them and you realized that well, when they realized that you had caught on to them, did that change the nature uh, of the experiences in any way? Like, for example, did the mask yeah. come down? Did they, did they still appear the same way or did the tone, the tenor of their messes change in any way? Yeah, it, it did. It, it totally changed. It all became way more aggressive. And, um, you know, at that point, it was, it was then catching on that they, I think they just, they know like they can't they can't get away with that like so they've just gone in all really it's become very it became very very dark so you know they they just very aggressively implanted me with you know implants that would also this is the other another aspect of these implants by the way is nightmares you know i was i was i was getting absolutely having, yeah, the ability you know, of them to plug in to, to that at that level, but, but please continue. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I, I'd never experienced anything like it before in my life, you know, and this gave me a true insight into the consciousness of those beings because the nightmares that I was having, okay. So the nightmares, they all have the same similar themes. Okay. So the themes would either be me high on drugs or there would be some kind of a stabbing or a murder there would be sexual abuse in it, either me doing it or someone else doing it to me or to my children or, you know, um, or there would be uh, some kind of, uh, you know, just, just, just violence, torture. Um, so the, the, yeah, the, the nightmares became extremely, extremely aggressive. And then of course, if I had, to, because there's a difference between subconscious mind dreaming and astral, astral experiences so of course with the astral experiences that also ramped up majorly so i had experiences for instance where i would i would wake up but obviously i'm still sleeping and then i would be lying on my bed and there would be all these bugs crawling all over my body or inside of my body and obviously i would be flushed with fear and i would be kind of lying there in terror until i'd you know and then i'd realize oh no i'm still sleeping and then I'd wake myself up and I'd still be in another dream and there'd be something else going on, you know, and then until I'm finally would be able to wake myself out of that state. And then I would be like, okay, the, the, the right now it's tapping into a fear of not being safe. I, I better do some work on that fear. So again, I mean, I've had to learn to really look at every, like, like with the racial story, you know, everything, every single trigger, every time you go through anything, there's an opportunity for healing and growth. So this is the one thing that I know now, like without a shadow of a doubt, there's all, you can always do that. You can always find that opportunity for growth. Um, and boundaries, my boundaries have become so kick ass in the last seven years, which is just fantastic. You know, I feel really strong in myself now. And, um, and that's just such, that's been a real gift. So a lot of, even though I've had some very aggressive attacks and very aggressive experiences, it has made me incredibly strong um as i've had it's almost as if i've been living through literally living through my worst nightmares and my worst fears and and i've been facing them bit by bit and by having done that i am then able to break more and more and more free to really be myself my true self so that's the 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 other side of it you know the higher perspective the the, the opportunity for growth and healing and for strengthening really really strengthening ourselves but it is we have to be willing to always look you know why is this happening what is going on here am i projecting is is this is this um, hooking into a wound and and then also still be willing to also look at but you know do i does this mean that the other person is off the hook do i still need to confront that person 
and often we do <laughs> so you know it's it's um it's never straightforward james as you know and um it's an interesting journey but it's yeah it's it's the the experiences that i've had with uh, these beings for sure definitely darkened um became very very aggressive uh yeah, very, very aggressive in, 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 in many ways and, um, and very, very challenging for me at the time as well because, you know, I, I didn't really, I was just kind of going through it and, and doing the best that I could at the time with everything that was, that was actually um, going on. Um, but now in hindsight, it's, yeah, I can understand as well that you know, in some ways I've, I've had to, to go through those experiences to really, really step deeply into who I truly, who I am and, and, and also to be able to, um, yeah, to be able to, to be a, a strong force on this planet, um, not just for myself, but also for others. And um, so, yeah, I'd say that definitely did happen. Well, we'll delve more uh, into some of these issues uh, in the, the second segment because the the Nightmare on Elm Street element to this, the Freddy Krueger element to it, yeah. it just shows in a very vivid way our multidimensionality because due to these plugins that we've been talking about, for lack of a better term, they use a common computer term, they can drag us down into their nether dimensions. And where we're immersed in, in their reality, a stage managed reality, which they create for us, so full of horror, full of uh, horrific things to see and experience. And it, it taps into primal fears, primordial fears, uh, archetypal mm. fears. And, Absolutely. and when we realize that they have the means to do that, then that just tells us that we have to up our game. But, but anyhow, we're just getting started up. Uh, Louisa, you want to tell our listeners uh, your website? Yes, it's louisahealing.com. So, um, yeah, just www.louisahealing.com. Um, have a look. Yeah, and Louisa does uh, do uh, consulting sessions too. So definitely, if, if anything that you've heard thus far – uh, in our interview and also in, in the next segment uh, is of interest to you and you feel that Louisa may be able to help you by all means, uh, you know, contact her. One of the things that I'll say just to that as well, James, is that I don't do the work for anyone else. And, you know, um, there'll be many, many healers out there, many healers who will be promising you, um, you know, that they can remove your implants for you, that they can be, um, yeah basically doing the work for you and I, I would just say be very very careful um i myself got ended up in a lot of um troubling situations with healers like that and none of them were ever able to remove anything from me only i was ever able to remove anything from myself by doing deep 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 inner work and that's what i support my clients with is to do the work from the ground up so this is, you know, if you, if you see me for a healing session, I'm not going to be closing my eyes and telling you to just lie back and do, you know, there's none of that. We're going to be doing deep psychological work. Um, I, I work with um, various different techniques such as um, tapping, um, you know, so, you know, meditation techniques and, um, and kinesiology techniques as well. But we, you know, we go in deep into the core wounding, into the inner child, the shadow work. And that is how, how you will clear implants if that is um, an, an issue that any of your listeners are having. Um, so I just wanted to be clear on that, James. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Because what I know from opinions and uh, experiences of others that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, they have gone to people who claim to be healers and then the upshot of that was they were in a worse state after they had had these uh healing sessions than, than they were before so anyhow we reached the end of a, a fascinating and thought-provoking first segment with our guest louisa love 
Um, if you like what we do, if you believe what we do here at the Cosmic Switchboard Show, please go to our website, thecosmicswitchboard.com, sign up and become a member. And also, please check out our, our natural supplement line. We've, we're really pleased to be offering natural supplements that we feel, uh, and of course, you know, all the um, medical disclaimers notwithstanding, we're not making any promises, but we do believe uh, in, in these products. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them on our website. So please take a look at them. Anyhow, uh, we've reached the end of the first segment and we'll see you at the top of the next segment. 